Hey everyone, in this installment of In a Nutshell, I'll be talking about afterburners. Afterburners are used mainly in military engines and sometimes non-military applications to increase thrust during takeoff, during acceleration, and for supersonic flight. So how can we increase the thrust of an engine? Let's take a look at the simplified jet engine thrust equation here, and we can see that one way we can increase the thrust is to increase the exit velocity of the gases coming out the exhaust of the engine. So let's take a look at a turbojet engine just to start off with here. We have air coming into the front of the engine at a velocity UA, that's the flight speed at a mass flow rate of m dot a. It comes into the diffuser, slows down through the compressor, gets mixed in with some fuel in the combustion chamber, ignited, comes out the turbine. The turbine powers the compressor. And then if we have an afterburner, uh, it goes through the afterburner and then out this nozzle at an exit velocity of ue. Due to temperature limitations uh, of the materials used in jet engines, particularly the turbine blades that are located just downstream of the combustion chamber, uh, engines operate fuel lean to keep the temperature at safe levels. This means that there's excess excess air left over in the engine that wasn't used during combustion, and we can take advantage of this excess air later by adding some fuel to it and burning it. This increases the energy of the gases in the engine even further, and we can take advantage of this increase in energy by converting the energy into kinetic energy in the form of an increased exhaust velocity, which thus increases our thrust. So now let's just briefly describe what the components of the afterburner are. If we look at the exhaust gases coming out of the turbine here, we have these spray bars where we have fuel precisely metered through these spray bars into the exhaust gases, and then what we can do is we can ignite it and then set up these recirculation zones here behind these bluff bodies, also called flame holders or V-gutters, and this helps to keep the incoming fuel air mixture ignited. Now in this region here, this is just a hollow pipe essentially, and in here this is where the complete combustion of that new fuel air mixture takes place. To keep the temperatures of the outside duct of the turbojet engine cool, uh, we have these liners, these cooling liners, and so these, usually on the outside we have a cooler uh, flow of air along the outside that keeps everything nice and cool. They have holes through them and that helps to dampen the acoustic modes that are that are present in the jet pipe cavity uh, because if we let those go unchecked we can get severe structural damage. Now that we have all the energy from the fuel released in this uh, in the jet pipe we need some way to expand it out to the atmosphere efficiently and so what we use is a converging diverging nozzle so it converges and then it diverges and the area at the throat and the area at the exit are set by conditions in the afterburner and conditions in the uh, in the atmosphere. The most efficient expansion of the exhaust gases happens when you expand the gases through this converging and diverging nozzle and have the exit pressure at the exit of the nozzle equal the atmospheric pressure. When you don't have this, what you get is a different pressure at the exit than out in the uh, in the atmosphere, and you get another pressure thrust term up here in the in the thrust equation, which I've neglected in this case. If you'd like to know more about afterburners, please watch my more in-depth video on this topic. Thanks for watching.